everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful September. I'm here to talk about the books that I read in the month of September. My month unfortunately ended with me being sick and you might be able to hear in my voice I'm still a little bit stuffy. Thankfully I don't have the sore throat anymore but I am mostly feeling better. Mostly. The first book that I finished in September was Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien Too by Johnny Sun. I wasn't familiar with this artist before the book was published, but when it was, I started hearing about his work and it seemed interesting, so I checked the book out from my library and it was very cute and enjoyable. If you're not familiar with Johnny or Jomney Sun, his character is an alien who visits Earth to meet the humans and learn about them. And the humans he meets include a frog, I think, or a tadpole, a caterpillar, a tree, and some other humans. And it's just kind of about this alien learning about life and change and death and finding meaning in all of those things. So yes, it is very cute and I gave it four stars. In September, I took a week off from work because it had been like a year and a half since I last took off time from work and I was reading another big book and feeling a little tired of big books and I wanted just a little bit of, you know, that instant gratification and so I went through my shelves and picked out some really short books I knew I could get through very quickly. So first I read the Griffin and Sabine book series. These books are only about 46 to 48 pages each and on the inside you get cool stuff like letters you can pull out and postcards you can read and it's essentially the correspondence between these two characters griffin and sabine who have a kind of psychic link between them and they have never met and you get to learn more about them and this connection that they have and it's really really interesting and goes by super quickly. After I read those three books I knew there was a fourth book that completed their story and answered some of the questions that you're left hanging with and luckily my library had it so I read that one the very next day and that one is called The Pharaoh's Gate and I rated all four of these Griffin and Sabine books four stars. Also on the same day I picked up those original first three, I read The Adventuress by Audrey Niffenegger. And this was kind of an odd book. And if you've read more than a couple books by Audrey Niffenegger, you probably know what I mean. And if you've only read The Time Traveler's Wife, you probably don't quite have that sense of just how odd Audrey Niffenegger can be. This book is all told in prints that she made in I think art school and um, not very many words but it tells this really interesting and weird story and I got this because it was on sale at a local bookstore and entertainment store that was closing. I will probably be getting rid of this book because it just, you know, was odd. I rated it three stars. Also, on that very same day, I picked up Step Aside Pops by Kate Beaton. This is the second book in the Hark a Vagrant collection, which are her online comic series, basically. And I love her sense of humor and her historical retellings and literary retellings and pop culture references. It's just so hilarious and I love it. And if you don't know Kate Beaton, you should definitely look up Hark a Vagrant online. This collection contains a retelling of the first half of Wuthering Heights, which is completely amazing and I love it. 
She has just the exact right balance of making fun of something and loving something. I rated this one five stars. The next book that I finished was a library checkout and that is Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. This is the next book she's come out with after We Were Liars and I really enjoyed that one so I was looking forward to Genuine Fraud but I didn't end up liking it as much. I didn't have quite the same experience I did with We Were Liars and it was a very fast read and interesting and enjoyable but I only rated it three stars. Maybe you would have a better experience with this if you hadn't read We Were Liars because if you have you kind of know what E. Lockhart can do to mess with your mind a little bit. And finally, the last book I finished in September was the big book of that month, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. This took me about four weeks to read. It's 782 pages and they are big pages and the font is, you know, decently small. And then there are footnotes written in even smaller text. <laughs> So there's really a lot in this book. It's a lot to get through and even when it is really exciting and interesting, it just still takes a long time to get through. So I rated this one 4.5 stars because at the end, when I had the whole story in here, inside, and I knew what the whole thing was, I was just left with this like, overwhelming feeling of just like being in love with this book and the story of it and the characters. So I knocked it down the half star because there were some parts where it didn't keep me awake when I was lying on my couch reading this and I did take a lot of naps in September which was great but some of the parts did move a little more slow and in such a big book I think that's kind of expected. I would recommend this book if you like the kind of writing that is charming and clever and the world building is so detailed yet also feels realistic because it's just woven so intricately with English history and it just feels like it could exist and that it probably did exist and I really enjoyed existing in this world and getting to know more about the magic and to experience the magic that happens in this book and I really hope she comes out with more books. I know there is a short story collection that focuses more on the females involved in the magic of this world because this is kind of a male heavy book so I would love to read that at some point but I would also love to read another novel by her because it was a really fantastic experience. I don't think I'll be getting rid of this book quite yet. I'm just not really ready to let go of it. I don't know if I will ever read this again. I do want to watch the miniseries and I can also say this is definitely one of my top 10 or however many books I've read this year. So overall it was a very productive reading month especially because I had that craving for short books in the middle. Also in September, during the week that I took off, I watched approximately 11 Ryan Gosling movies and if you follow me on Instagram and watched my stories during that time, you will have seen my daily updates for which Ryan Gosling movies I watched. And previous to that, I had only seen three Ryan Gosling movies the Notebook, Lars and the Real Girl, and La La Land, and now I have seen many more. And to my favorite Ryan Gosling list, I would have to add Drive, which I rewatched the very next day, and Crazy Stupid Love, because Ryan Gosling is in his prime in that movie. So good. <laughs> my number one favorite of all time is still The Notebook, because I just love him in that movie and I love Rachel McAdams in that one and the two of them together. It's just so good. 
So that was my September. Let me know how your September went and if you've read any of these books or let me know what your favorite Ryan Gosling movie is. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Bye.